Do you want to build cool structures but they all end up looking like this? Well, I got you covered. Today I will teach you different steps that you can follow to improve your builds in different scales and difficulty levels, all made simpler thanks to the action mode. Hello, my name is Calvin and in today's tutorial we will be covering some tools and techniques that we haven't seen so far in my previous tutorials, plus some others that we've already seen but are also very useful for creating structures. Ship, move please. The focus, however, will be on how to assist ourselves with them to speed up the process and make it easier for us. That's why after covering the basics, we are going to build three structures in different scales and styles. So let's see how that goes. The most useful tools for creating structures with Axiom are the ones right here, which for some reason I have not yet explained in my tutorials, so here we go. To access them, we need to scroll to the extra slot and hold Alt to expand the menu. Then we can scroll up to select the different tools, like clone, stack, smear, and so on. Most of these tools work the same way, so it's important to know how to use them. The one by default is move. So let's say we have something like this, then we just click the first point with left click and the second point with right click. In this case, we just need to scroll to move the blocks in the direction relative between us and the thing we want to move. So let's say you want to move this upwards, then you need to fly on top of it and then scroll. Now, if we don't like it, we can cancel with left click. While selecting, if we didn't grab the entire thing with just two points, we can extend the selection with the mouse wheel click. And once you start moving, you can see the offset above our hotbar, which basically tells us the amount of blocks in each direction in which we are moving our selection. Then, you can also use the mouse wheel click to move to specific places quicker, and if you click in the air, it will move it to your position. Once we are happy, just click confirm with the right click and the blocks will be moved. And another very useful thing we can do is to rotate the selection with Ctrl R. This will rotate it 90 degrees to the right each time we press it. And we can also do Ctrl F to flip or mirror it along the axis we are facing. So notice how the flip does something different depending on which direction we are facing. Then we have the clone tool. This one works in the exact same way as the move tool. The only difference is that it will copy our selection many times until you hit finish. But other than that, you can do the exact same things with its copy, which you can move it, rotate it, flip it, and so on. Up next we have stack. With it, we can select and scroll to stack our selection in the direction we are facing as many times as we want. Once we are happy with it, we hit confirm and that's it. Simple, but very useful. For the smear tool, it's a bit tricky to use, but in essence it is very similar to stack, with the main difference being that it will stack our selection in different directions simultaneously. So for instance, let's say that we want to create a simple staircase, we can use the smear tool to stack this line of stairs a same amount of blocks in the horizontal and vertical directions. For instance, 7 in each. Following the offset guidance is very useful for this. Then we have extrude, which will basically extrude blocks of the same type that are connected to each other in the same surface. Be careful not to accidentally click on big surfaces, cause it will take some time. Erase helps us to get rid of things we don't like. We can select the box, like we did with the other tools, and then remove them with the delete key on our keyboard. Or we can directly right click to erase blocks of the same kind, but you have a bit less control with this. And lastly, we have the Symmetry tool, which we will not be using today, so don't worry about it. Let's start with something easy and build a small house in a medieval style so that I can show you how the tools can help you get it done faster. For this style of houses in general, I like to start with a foundation made out of a darker stone, like Tuff for instance. And the foundation is basically a rectangle, so we can use a stack tool to get that shape done very easily. And we can even add a small segment coming out if we want. Now, we need to design the frame of the house, for which we can use spruce logs. We will start by marking the shape with only one block, so in case we don't like something, we can very easily change it. Once the shape is done and we are happy with it, use the stack tool again to bring the frame up a few blocks. Depending on the size, you can go higher or lower. In this case, I will stack it four times to get five block tall pillars. Now, go ahead and in a similar way fill the interior wall's bottom layer with another block. Made a mistake? Don't worry, use the erase tool to delete what you don't like and start over. Here, I decided to make it thicker, so I just moved it a few blocks further. And then again, stack it up to cover everything. Now we need to choose a place for the door. The design will depend on the size of your framing. So let's say that you have a 5x5 area like me. We can have a simple arch with the door behind it. This is great because it adds a bit of depth. Another option for a smaller area is to fill the sides with walls 
add two blocks on top and a slab in the middle. The door would go behind this and then we just need to cover the back of it with trap doors or full blocks. This creates a small arch that looks very cool and takes a bit less space. Depending on the size of your house and the framing that you chose, the designs for doors and windows can vary, you can even combine them. But in essence, design the door and windows for your house and then clone them in some of the places with the same dimensions. You might need to fix certain spots and modify your designs, but that's alright because you don't want it to be all the same, otherwise it would look too repetitive. Now that that's done, we can add a second floor by first filling in with horizontal spruce logs at the top of the first one. Now, I like to choose a place for a small overhang, so we can put some upside down stairs here and then go around and repeat a similar process to what we did for the first floor. The framing goes first, for which we can repeat the same one that we used below, or choose a different one, that's up to you. Then we stack it up, we can go ahead and add these logs coming out of it, which looks kinda nice. Fill in the walls with a lighter color this time, cut the windows and doors, and then decorate. Okay, so far I like the shape and the details, but let's suppose that I don't like the underside. Well, we can very easily replace it by opening the editor menu with right click, choosing the new block that we want, oak planks for instance, and then drag and drop it in the underside. This will automatically replace all the underside blocks that are connected with each other with oak plants. This way you can very quickly try different colors on your builds and I think in this case oak looks better. Alright, we gotta make a roof now, and there's a lot to say about roofs but for now let's keep it simple. Just begin by finding the center and mark it out. Then go to one side and with the block that you like make a diagonal. The simplest one would be to go one block higher each time like this. If you want it to be steeper, you can go two blocks each time. If you want it to curve, you can start with one block and switch to two as you get higher, and even keep increasing it if you have more space. Or in this case, we can use slabs to have this smaller slope, that's all up to you and the style of roof that you want. In this case, I will use slabs at the bottom and full blocks with slabs at the top to get a small curving roof. You probably noticed that I only built half of it, that's because I will use clone and control R to rotate it, so I don't have to remember how many blocks I used each time as long as I know where the center is. Of course in this case it's very easy to remember, but when the build is larger, having to build only half of it is very useful. Now we can clone the entire frame of the roof and bring it over to the other sides. In this one I will modify the shape slightly and bring it down so it's not all the same. And then we can just fill in the inner layer with another block like deep slate blocks and slabs where we see fit, so that we can later stack it all the way to complete the roof. We can add some details and then do the same with the other side, making sure that they blend together where they meet each other. And that's it, we only need to fill in these gaps and the rest it's a matter of adding the decorations and detailing. Some classical ones would be a chimney, some extra windows at top, foliage, or even play around with the colors if you want. But in general, it depends on your ideas and the time that you want to put into decorating your house. Some techniques are easier than others, but with practice you'll get to learn different tricks that you can use across your different builds. So, this is the final result, and now let's move to a bigger structure so that I can show you some useful axiom tools for them. When it comes to building larger structures, the most important part is to get the shape right, and for that we can use the shape tool from axiom. With it we can pretty much create any basic shape that we need for our build, like rectangles, cylinders, cones, spheres, and so on. Using this tool is pretty straightforward. To the right, choose a block type that you want, for instance diamond blocks in my case. Here we can select the shape, a tube for instance, move it to the place you want by using the arrows and tweak the parameters like size and rotation. Bear in mind that depending on the shape that you choose, the size parameters might change slightly. So here I'm trying to create the basic main body for a wizard tower, and I'm using diamond blocks as a placeholder. That way I can focus entirely on the shape and nothing else. As you can see for now the shapes are very simple, just two cylinders on top of each other, and that's boring. So we are going to add a cone at the base and we are going to add the metaball modifier to our shape. This will make it blend with the existing terrain and give us this more interesting smooth transitional shape for the base of the tower. We can add some thinner cylinders at the top for detailing, and for the roof we can again use a cone shape and play around with the roundness of it, until we get something that we like. Playing around with the shape and the metaball modifier is very good to get a more interesting shape in this case, and remember that you can always tweak things by hand. Once we are happy with the general shape, carve out some holes for large windows where you see fit and maybe a door with a staircase, and that's it, we have the shape for our tower done, now we need to paint it. 
Here I will show you the quickest technique for painting. Is it the best? No, but it will get you a decent result. First, choose the main colors for the different segments of the tower. If you segmented it with different placeholder blocks, this should be as simple as dragging the blocks from here to their respective places. In this case, I will go simple and have calcite for the main body of the tower, oak for the wizard room, and amethyst for the roof. Now, this looks better, but it's not enough. So we can use the auto shade function to make it look nicer. Let's start by selecting the calcite, go to operations and select auto shade. Now, here we will see a few parameters. This tool will shade our selection using the base blocks, in this case calcite, as the brighter one. And it will do it depending on our player positioning if we have this ticked on. If not, we can select the sun orientation. Here, I like to set it up like this, but in general, you can play around with different parameters and different player positions until you get something that you like. Now, we can do the same for the wizard room and the same for the roof. But we can notice that it doesn't really work for these ones. There will be blocks where auto shade doesn't work. So here we have a few options. Option number one is doing the coloring entirely by hand. It takes time, but you can get the result that you like the most. Option number two is grab another base block, sandstone for instance, and do the auto shade as normal with that as a base block. And then replace the blocks with another gradient of the color that you originally wanted. You can use the assistance of an external site like few blocks for this. Uh, in this case, I'm choosing this purple gradient, and now it's a matter of recognizing the brighter blocks on both gradients and replace them respectively. For this, you can use Ctrl R and select them manually, or drag and drop as we did before if the blocks are connected. Option number three is to use the gradient painter tool with the gradient that you like. Here I'm using the same purple one, and now we are going to paint the roof with it. Just select the direction of the gradient and drag along with these settings. If you want to understand more about the manual painting techniques, I have a tutorial on that right here. There we go, I like that for the tower. We can add some binds to it using the path tool, choose cut mool, make sure to tick keep existing on so we don't replace the blocks that belong to the tower, and go around with right click until you get the vine wrapped around the tower. Now we can use a noise painter with some air and azalea leaves to paint the vines, add some details for the windows here and there, and trim on the roof, some extra things, and that's it for the tower. Axion becomes particularly useful when it's time to build mega structures. So here I will show you a few steps that I like to take while building a castle on a large scale. To begin with this, I recommend having a reference picture. This can be a drawing that you made or some concept art that you can find around the internet. I found one that I liked in ArtStation and now with Axion we can place the image directly on our in-game screen. The reference picture is not something that we have to follow with full accuracy, it's there to help us get started with shapes, proportions and colors. And later on, it's like a safe net that we can come back to when we don't know what comes next in our build. So we will begin by using the shape tool again with placeholder blocks to mark out the towers and roofs separately. In fact, the way I like to think of mega structures is as a sum of the smaller structures that we've learned how to create before in the tutorial. And in general, I like to begin with the shapes that are sort of in the middle of the reference picture. They tend to stand out more for me and are easier to follow but you can begin with a side or shape that works best for you. After tinkering around with the shapes for approximately an hour, I arrived at a layout for the castle that I consider to be good enough for the purpose of this tutorial. As always, getting the shape and proportions right is the most important part of any build, so it's always worth it to dedicate some extra time to it if you need to. In this scale of build and at this stage of the building process, I like to add as many large details as I can using placeholder blocks, like granulations, windows, doors, overhangs and so on. That way, it's easier for me in the future to recognize the places that I have to detail with smaller blocks, and also get a better idea of how the build is going to look before I start painting it. For the painting of this large structure, I used a mix of the different techniques that we mentioned for the wizard tower. First, I chose this sandy color gradient for the main body of the buildings and terracotta for the roofs, which are very similar to the ones we have in the reference picture. I used the gradient painter for some of the towers, I added some weatherization by hand in certain areas close to the ground and under the windows, for the roofs I really liked the results of auto shade so I kept that, and then I just went around adding highlights and modifications wherever I saw fit plus adding all the details to the granulations, windows and doors that we had marked before. So here is the final result for the castle where I also added some small trees in the towers and a few flags at the top. 
which in the end the small details are the ones that help the build feel more complete. And one last important thing that we didn't talk about and it's very important for builds is the setting and environment. It's not the same to see these builds here alone in a flat surface than having them surrounded by trees, boulders, maybe on a cliff or with a huge custom terrain around them. So remember that, especially in survival where we tend to build in smaller scales and adding some trees and boulders doesn't really take a long time and it can improve the look of a build by a lot. Just a little disclaimer here, building structures is a very wide concept in Minecraft. There are so many different styles, scales and techniques that you can play around with, so this tutorial is by no means supposed to cover everything. Consider it more as a basic starting point from which you can grow and improve as a builder. And on that note, this is going to be everything for today's tutorial, I hope you learned something useful, this has been Calvin and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.